My brother got this for me as a gift. A surprise gift. Bless his heart. I Well, it wasn't really a surprise. But it was a definite gift. And it was very much appreciated. All right, I got this 23andMe kit from my beautiful wife for my birthday. It says, hi, let's get started. It says you're supposed to register your, your kit at 23andMe. So before I spit, I think I have to go do that. Well, why can't you spit in it first and then register? So that's step one. Okay. And you're not sponsored. By this. This isn't sponsored by this. Wink, wink. But you could, could be. be. Here we go. It's Haley's turn for 23 and me spitting in the vial thingy. Nasty. She didn't eat or drink anything for 30 minutes for the directions. Okay, now it's time to spit in it. So yucky. Even I'm disgusted. You have to fill up to the line, like right there. Look at that. Yuck. That's her spit. Why is it staying there? Just keep spitting in there. It'll go down. It'll drip down eventually. How come it doesn't go down automatically? Let me see. Oh, why is that? What's in there? That's not good. Why? Did you read the directions? No, I did. Ex there, it came with the stuff already in there. The liquid is already in there. Must have came like that. What liquid? There's liquid because... That's my spit. That's how much spit you had in your mouth? I was saving it. Did I you didn't. have so much in there it felt like a mouthful of water? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. So I wouldn't have to keep... So you like went way past the line. <laughs> hmm, that's so funny. So is it done? Yeah. That's it. So I did good? Uh, more than good. Uh, I don't know if I should dump some out or what. Hold on. So this, this is it, and um... So Haley, with one spit, here's the line, and with one spit, she f actually it filled all the way up to the top, and I was freaked out at first because I thought accidentally some of the fluid f that comes in the cap that mixes with the spit, I thought it was already in the tube. So I was freaking out, but then we realized that she had been saving her spit in her mouth, and that whole swoop all the way up that filled it up is her spit so i hope it works i hope the fluid was able to mix in with it from the top and now we're going to send it in we're going to wrap it up put the cap on and put it in the bag and then send in the box through. and send it through we'll see thank you ty we'll see what kind of um jeans she has oh, a lot of messed up jeans so remember to keep the box that comes in because that's the box you ship it out Pack it up and send it in. And then it's prepaid. You just put it in the mail. Oh, it's prepaid? Yeah, it's already prepaid. I wonder how much percentage Vietnamese I am. Because my dad is a little bit Vietnamese. And Jewish. You well, probably end up more than 50% or 50% Jewish. Maybe. Maybe a little more. Yeah, but an, an Italian. An Italian. And 100% OI. <laughs> Poor baby. And 5,000% beautiful. What's up, everybody? Hello there. So what happened was, we're talk we talk about you first or mine? Um, we can talk about you first. Okay. And then we'll talk about the infamous, like, magical spitting. Yeah. So mine was very interesting. I thought I, thought I was going to be, um, like, 8% Italian and 8% Native, 8% Norwegian. But it turns out I'm only 1% Italian, and I have a lot of Irish in me too, Irish and British. I'm largely European, obviously, but I do have 9% um, Native American in me, which is pretty awesome. That's awesome. They give you like all this information, 
And if you don't like to read, it sucks to be you because this information is great. Once you delve into it and kind of like start to study it a little bit, it's like, whoa, that's really cool. So it sucks to be me then. Well, you just let me read it to you. <laughs> I'm her, I'm her studious one. It's not that I don't find it interesting, I do. I'm, an, I'm the nerd that likes to just like learn stuff. So I'm 85.6% European, 75.2% British and Irish, and 30% French and German. I am 14.8% Scandinavian. My grandma was half Norwegian, oh, more than half Norwegian. And um, Southern European is only 5%, which includes Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Uh, East Asian and Native American, 9.9%. And then what's really cool is I'm a percentage of Western Asian and North African and Sub-Saharan African, which includes this, you know, this culture called Senegambian and Guinean, which I haven't hadn't heard of before, so it's interesting to look up. And then on the website, you can go and look. It gives you um, cultural and other facts about the countries that your DNA is from, of what kind of food they eat and their culture and their, you know, travel and art and all that kind of stuff, which is really cool. So I'm excited to read up about some of these cultures, including the um, Senegambian and Guinean culture. And they also give you health predisposition reports. It gives several tests, a number of tests, and it tells you if you have the carrier for that specific thing. For instance, I, I have a slightly increase of age-related macular degeneration. They were able to find that out. Um, in what my does DNA. that mean for people that don't know what that means? Macular degeneration, it has to do with the eyes. You lose your vision, basically. Okay. Um, celiac disease, which I kind of always wondered about. It's not, it's not shocking to me. Um, so you do have it or you could get it? I could. It's a slightly increased risk, which means I had one genetic variant. I see. For it. And how about Alzheimer's? Um, you have the carrier gene? It does a test for late onset Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, and I don't have any carriers for for that. But that doesn't mean you can't get these things. It just means your genetics... Chances are less. Chances are less. Oh, and one other thing I w thought was really cool is I'm related to Utsi the Iceman. Um, I think I have... Um, I'm related to him as well. I read that today that I... On my father's side of the family. Nice. So, I mean, this stuff is just crazy. It's so in-depth and all this stuff. It gives you not just your, what the diseases or whatever you're, you're predisposed to. It also gives you wellness reports. Like, for instance, they have this thing called alcohol flush reaction. How, how easily and how well your body flushes out different toxins like alcohol. So. so mine came out unlikely to flush. And so did mine. So. And as well as caffeine. Unlikely which, to consume less, which is true. Mine said likely to consume more, which is true. Um, For mine, mine said likely to consume less, which is true because yes, I do love caffeine, but it does not love me. I can only drink about what would you say, four to six ounces? Yeah. In a day. One In a day. whole day, like four ounces is, six is pushing it, I think. This one says deep sleep. Less likely to be a deep sleeper, that's true. Yeah. And it also says sleep movement, likely more than average movement, which is... Mine is the same. Mine said the same. Which, not. I don't think either one of us move that much in our sleep. Mm-mm. But... I know knows? you don't. And then here's... Here's one thing that I kind of had to wrap my brain around. Genetic weight. Predisposed to weigh less than average. Now, that's true because up until my late 20s, I was really, really thin. And I hardly ever ate anything. It, like, I, it was like a chore to eat. I didn't have an eating disorder. I just, I was underweight. And I think that shot my metabolism. I have like no metabolism now. And so I started gaining weight rapidly. But also diet, duh. And medication. 
Medication is a huge factor in weight gain. Exercise, diet, all of it. So, pretty interesting stuff. So what was the one thing that surprised you the most when you got your results? The most surprising thing, to be honest with you, is I'm mostly Irish. Which, no. You didn't, you didn't know. I didn't know that. No. Nobody in my family, like our ancestors, don't come from Ireland. Apparently they do. But I think that's also um, Ireland and Norwegian people are re related. Yeah, the Scandinavians and the Celts go way back. So Very cool. Yeah. Your turn? My turn. So, I'm going to answer that question first for myself. The thing that surprised me, and I have my notes here on my phone just because it's easier for me than to fumble through different papers. Um, the thing that surprised me about my results is that I am actually a, a an exact 50% Ashkenazi Jewish. Now, I knew my father was Jewish on my father's side of the family, but I didn't know how strong of a percentage they were. But it turns out I am exactly 50%. I am 38% Italian. And my mom is Italian, and my mom's side of the family. Both her mother and father were Italian on both sides. I did find out also that I am 2.8% Greek and Bal Balkan. I am 44.4% Southern European. I am 3.4% Western Asian and North African. And that's close to Italy yes. too so it's kind of yeah into southern Italy my father is 50% european and my mother is 46.4% european also now i have to find what my now do they categorize southern european different than european european yeah, I think so yeah my health risks are i have a slightly increased risk of having age-related macular degeneration, which, like me. which I kind of already knew that could happen because with osteogenesis imperfecta, also there is a risk of eyesight-related issues. Um, it is a miracle that I just now am starting to wear glasses in my early 30s. A lot of people with my condition have glasses as soon as they are young. I mean, you know, and I didn't need them till I was in my 30s. So I'm really lucky. So that could be a, a, a risk too. Um, I have a slightly increased risk of getting celiac disease and also a slight increased risk in late onset alzheimer's which you know you're not gonna get it we have to put out everybody put it out to the universe nobody's gonna get alzheimer's and they're gonna find a cure i hope so yes um let's see what else you want to look at here and just see if there's anything else important that you think i'm missing let's see I'm surprised they don't have OI-related conditions on here, like OI-related tests. Right. Bone health. Yeah, like bone there's, density or something. There's nothing like that. There's hereditary thrombophilia, hereditary hemochromatosis, which no variants were detected on yours, but there was on mine. Oh, really? Mm hmm And that is hereditary hemochromatosis is a genetic condition characterized by absorption, of too much dietary iron. This may lead to iron overload, which can cause damage to the joints of certain organs, such as the liver, skin, heart, and pancreas. And yeah, I had one variant for that. And I do have liver and liver problems. And then there's, um, what else? It doesn't say anything about Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, does it? Uh-uh. 
Because I did get diagnosed with that last year. Yeah, with this this study she did through the hospital about uh, OI, um, they did kind of a, was it a genetic test? Yeah, it was through blood though. A gene genetic testing through blood and it, it came out that she has um, Ehlers-Danlos, which is basically very closely related to OI. So there's no surprise there that they detected it. But probably a really mild form of it. Yeah, well it's, Basically, a connective tissue disorder, and bone is connective, connective tissue, so they're very closely related. Another one I had a, a, a variant for was alpha one antitrypsin deficiency, which I had no clue what it was, but it's a genetic condition that can lead to lung and liver disease. Well, that's scary. Do I have it? <laughs> um. Oh. You thought it was pretty interesting that you're 50% Jewish and your brother is less. Is less. Same mother and father. But that's really all I have to say about it. It was a fun experience. Oh, Andrew is going to talk about my spit. Oh, yeah. You'll see in the video. She basically, I didn't know that she was like saving her saliva in her mouth prior to spitting in the tube. <laughs> So she spits it a little bit in the tube. You have to fill up a tube. Like it's like it took me forever to spit in it and fill it up to the line. And so when she did it, I handed her the tube. She spits a little bit and then hands it back to me. I'm like, what's wrong with it? Why is the why is the fluid in there? It's not supposed to be in that chamber. That's where the spit goes. Cause you know, below where the spit goes in, there's some fluid that mixes with your spit. I was like, they gave you a broken one. It's broken. The fluid's in the wrong spot. Turns out it was her fucking spit. It blew me away. I'm like... <laughs> I stored it up for the past, like, 10, 15 minutes before doing the, the test because I didn't want to be sitting there keep spitting bit by bit by bit by bit because I've heard stories that it's really hard. Well, you watched me do it and you're like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Yeah, so I just started to, you know, salivate, salivate, and I didn't swallow. And how long are you supposed to wait? You're supposed to not eat or drink anything. For even, like a half hour even before. Even water for a half hour so before. So I did, and I did follow the direction to a T. Well, I just started saving this they spit underneath my tongue for like 10 to 15 minutes before doing the test. Just, But actually the experience of spitting into the tube was really easy for me. <laughs> I just did it once and that was it. <laughs> One spit and I was done. All right. All right, everybody. Hope you like this content. Make sure you like, subscribe, and Hit that little bell. Ring my bell. That way you get notified of our uploads. Right. Yes. And don't unsubscribe. We need those subscribers. Wait. Oh yeah, we've already lost two more. Really? Since I told you last. I'm yes. sorry. So sorry. Peace and love. Peace and love. Bye. Bye. Now she has to get up. You might have to move. I'm a little trapped. This should be in the video, too. I had to sit down because my feet always go numb. When I'm Bye. I'm sorry. You're trapped, too. So Bye. sorry. I don't know how the song goes. Bye.